Okay, this screencast looks at how you can use uh, GitHub by dragging and dropping your files to upload them to your repo or repository. This isn't really the best way of probably working with GitHub. You know, it has that functionality and you know, it does work, but you might find sometimes that you won't have complete control about what it's doing. And also you might have browser compatibility or issues that may go wrong. So, you know, it has this functionality, but the best way of using certainly GitHub would be using um, the command line through terminal and pushing uh, your content up to your repository using the command line or alternatively you can use github desktop to uh, push and pull your content up to your repo on github but we'll go through this um and you know if you are sometimes stuck and you want to just do something really quickly this is a really good way of of getting something up to your repo and getting it working we'll also now look at um once we've done that to how it can be served as a github page and what that means is it's like a little mini server for your project or your site. So we're going to have a look at both of those things. Um, so we'll get started. Right. So here I am in my um, GitHub profile. I've got an education account, which gives me unlimited uh, private repositories for free. And I'm going to click on uh, the repositories. And once I've done that, I will click on the new button. I give it a name, I'm gonna call it Cats because that's what my site's about. You can put a description in there, I strongly recommend you do that. I'm going to create a private account and also I'm gonna initialize a readme. Always a good idea to do that. You can do it afterwards, but really it's more straightforward to just get a readme on there which will just give you um, the name of your repo and then you can add it later. So once I've done that, I click Create Repository. Now, once that's come in, you'll see the repos here. I've just got the readme file in here and it presents what it looks like down the bottom. You can edit it any way you see fit and add information there. Always a good idea to have good, clear, detailed information about your repository listed in the readme. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to drag and drop some of my um, files for my site. Now, if I open my folder, which I've created my site in, all I'm doing is just uploading the content. So whatever files you have, uh, markup files, HTML, uh, style sheets, and maybe JavaScript, you drag and drop the content and put them up there. So once I drag them over, you'll see GitHub is expecting them and it comes along and it will take you know lots of different file types on there and I just drop them there. Now it'll give you some indication of um, it's progress and depending on how many files you've uploaded and your connection speeds, this will vary how long it takes to push up. Now, once it's done that, it will list them. Now, always remember, certainly when you're using Git or GitHub, you're, you're making commits, you're making changes and naming those commits and then pushing them up or pulling them down from servers. So here I'll just say added files, but you need to make it meaningful. Not only for yourself, when you go back on a project and you want to find what you've changed and why you've changed it, but more importantly, when you're working with groups or teams, they will also need to know who's made changes and why they've made changes. Once I've done that, I will just click on commit changes. Now, this may take some time. So once that's done, you'll see your files will appear in the repo. And in the center, these are the commit messages. Right. Now, I want to create um, a website from this. Now, all you can do, you can click on the index and what that will do is just open it up like that. It won't open it up like a website. So what we need to do is to do that to make it so it's served up as a website. Now, normally, again, good practice would be, I've mentioned before, using the command line or GitHub pages. And when you're doing that, your best bet would be to create another branch. So this is the master branch as default. So you create another branch that would be your GitHub pages and, and there's a way of naming them. You call them GH-pages. And what you would do is that's like your presentation layer or your what what like the little mini web server for serving like a static site that doesn't contain databases, only markup documents, HTML, style sheets, and JavaScript. So 
Um, that's pretty difficult to do it through the browser window. It can be done, but it's a bit cumbersome. So I'm just looking for a quick way. I pushed up a site here, and now I want it to be served as a website. I don't want to create another branch because I'm just using it through the browser. If it was using it for using the command line or disk um, GitHub desktop, that would be more straightforward. So what I will do here is just make um, the master branch and the GitHub page is one and the same thing, so I only need one branch. So if I go up to settings, I go down, I've got GitHub pages. It wants me to know the source, where's the source of the files it wants to serve. I change none and I use the master branch. And once I've done that, I click save. Again, this will take a little bit of time, depending on your connection. And if I go down here, it'll give me where it lives. So if I just uh, open this up in a new window, here it is. This is my um, site. So it's just got some words on it and a cat picture. But you'll see the address is your uh, repository. Um, your profile name is here, .github.io, and then the repository name is, is the So it's serving up a site. You can give that to other people or people can link to it. Now, even though my site and my um, repository is private, um, my um, GitHub page here it's serving up will be in the public domain. So that's what you need to bear in mind. But usually that's fine because you, you are serving up a site. Now, if I go back and I go back to my repository, say, for example, I want to make a change. Again, we're just using it through the browser. We're not using it through the command line or doing it locally and pushing it up to GitHub. We're going to do everything here. We click on the index file, opens this up. I click on the edit button here. And all I'll do is I'll type in really in capital letters so you can see the change. Need to put a um, commit message added uh, word really in there. And I hit commit that. And then I go back to my repo up here and it will have it um, here. So, so that, that's the way I could um, update it. Now, if I go back to the tab where the site is and I refresh it, you'll see here it's added really. So you just keep on going up and you can edit it there. So it's a quick way if you ha have a site that, that you just want to quickly do it, you can just do it all through the browser and edit it. But it may get quite complicated if you're doing everything through there. It's a large slide, it has lots of files. Probably the best way of doing it is locally and then pushing it up at certain points. Now, up at the top, we've got description, website, topics provided. Now, it's a good place to put information about your website up at the top. So, what I will do is I will um, just copy the address for the site. You can do this also. Uh, down here, so you would copy this uh, and then paste that in at the top. So I copy that, and then if I go back to my uh, repo page and I click the edit button for the description, I'll just say cat site, but it needs to be something meaningful and put that in there. Then I paste this in and then I click save. Now, if anyone comes to this repo, um, or and it's pro uh, and it's public, or they have access to it. They can click up at the top, but you can give that and send that to other people. And when you click on there, it will take you to that site. Okay, so that's just a quick and easy way of using drag and drop, making a GitHub page that is using the master branch as its source, and then editing it within the browser. As I said before, probably not the best way of using GitHub, but, it, it, but it's the most straightforward way of doing something really quickly using drag and drop.